great show. We were here, what? A, a, a few weeks ago. A few yeah. weeks ago, I think we did a show. But we got a great, uh, well, we got Miranda Panda, my of course. co-host. <laughs> and we got a great actor that's here today. You probably know him, Rob Fanaro, everybody. Hi. Rob Fanaro. And we're going we're gonna to show some of his clips. We're going to talk about, you know, different things about acting and, and what's going on with his, uh, you know, his life. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, future life with, you know, the acting world. And yes. it's, it's going to be a great show, so stay tuned, everybody. All right. So, Rob, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, Thank great, you. great. Thank so, you for inviting me. Hi, man. How are you? Hi. Yeah, so, nice to meet you. Um, so what's going on? You got, you got some... Well, we're, 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 we're getting there post-COVID and hoping that the business um, begins to pick up a little bit in terms of television and, and film. Film, yeah. Uh, the auditions are not really coming in, um, but uh, hopefully when the, yeah. theater, when the theater opens up in September, It'll be. Uh, of course everyone is working on personal things. I'm working on a few things, uh, Zooms, which I don't really Zooms. truly like. The Zooms. What is a Zoom? It's like... Zoom is like, you know, you get people together and, the, you know, you, you, you do, it's like a video, it's like a recorded uh, play yeah, reading. it's web chat. Uh, it's a web, web chat, chat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Podcast. So there's all new things that are coming out now. Well, that's what, the that's what, that's what actors right. have been doing, they've been getting yeah. together to rehearse plays and... They're kind of like, yeah. it's not the same talking into a no, camera no. Right. and you're talking into a little green dot. You don't get that one-on-one -on -one. like, this feels great to be right. with you. Yeah. And Miranda live, I feel like I'm, tell you, we're, I'm we're empowered. Very, we're very pr privileged tonight to be with a great, I mean, uh, I'm not yeah. saying it because he's here with us, you know, Miranda, but he's... He's a great actor. Yeah, phenomenal. You see, you see him great. I know. Thank you so much. I it's mean, so and nice he worked with, uh, he worked with, you know, you, you played alongside um, James Gan Gandalf Gandolfini. Gandolfini. And, and I don't want to say it. Jimmy right. Gandolfini, yes. Gandolfini. Yeah. Yes. And he was a good friend of yours, right? Yes, he was. And there yes. it is. There's a awesome. picture of you with him. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Up there. And uh, and he was, a, he was a great character, you know, he was, uh, James. Oh, he was a wonderful actor. I mean, uh, you know. James went to California. He did Streetcar Named Desire in Europe. Yeah. And uh, he played, uh, St I played Stanley. He played Mitch. And we toured Scandinavia, if you can believe it, for wow. three months. He and Lily Hammer. Wow. Stevie Van Zandt awesome. did, his, did his thing. Lily Hammer. Uh, so yeah. you lived, you, you. So we lived, we lived that. You lived the uh, rock star acting. Well, world, I mean, you know, in between. Well, so much of a rock star thing. We had well, I mean, rock star stuff. acting, you know. I'm, I'm, Phasing it into my, yeah, my yeah. world of music. Eventually, eventually we hooked up again, and yeah. um, I, I, he asked me if I wanted to uh, be on the show and, and or to actually to audition. A friend of mine went up to him um, at a party and said, "You know, I know a friend of yours, Bobby. That some people call me Bobby, yeah. Bobby for now. He's working at Caroline's Comedy Club and managing." And, and uh, James remembered that and he took his driver, Joe Fay, and Joe. Went around the city to find a cover. He didn't remember the right comedy club. He went to two or three comedy clubs before he, he landed on Caroline's, which I was managing at the time. Wow. And that's and, where he spotted you? And that's where he came down wow. to, to retrieve me, to, but, to but ask he, me to audition. Wow, but how, did he see you acting? Uh, no, we had, we, we had wow. seen each other, and he yeah. came back from California, and we, we, I think I saw him maybe two times after the play. Mm -hmm. Me and another actor in the play, we got together to have a dinner, Johnny Barone. And then uh, I, I saw him with, hanging out with the people from Caroline's at Rudy's. It's a Hell's Kitchen bar. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the actors go there afterwards, you know, after the theater and stuff like that, hang out. You know, a lot of social networking and it's going on. Not social networking, that would be like, well, yeah, socializing and networking, socializing in a live, live or with a live audience. Yeah. So I met him there. And then, of course, my friend went up to him. I think this, the, the third year of Sopranos, when it was really successful, just before he had a party, he had he gone to a party and he went up to him and he, he had the cojones to do that. And, yeah. and <laughs> God bless him. Gordy Silva. I owe him a lot. Awesome. Yeah, see, so, so it, it, it was fate that got you uh, yeah. first. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. yet I had always gone in and out of doing acting and stuff like that. And... Uh, I was always in the entertainment field before that. Um, it was um, the Madison Square Garden. I was an event manager there. So I always kind of kept my feet in. But I had a family, so I needed to make money. Yeah. And um, that's what I did. I, I had to make some money, so I had to take these other jobs. And still had the acting on the back burner, 
but I truly wasn't pursuing it. And James yeah. asked me, came in and said, have you been active? Of course. I said, yeah, yeah I've been acting all the time. I walk in here and I act. Yeah. I'm acting all the time. I lied. Of course, you got to lie. <laughs> when he gets on, he yeah. said, he's okay. Yeah, I can't so promise you anything, but, you know, go ahead. Well, I'll give you the audition. I got a part. I landed on a role. So he, and from then on, I've been working professionally. So he got you in. He, but he, he was, was my was, godfather. He was my agent. He was my rabbi. Wow. A real wow. mensch. Wonderful man. Generous man. And he became the, the star of the... Of Soprano of the, of the whole country, of the whole right. world. I mean, he, yeah. was that, he was you. Yeah, I mean, besides doing the films that he did, you know, besides that, True Romance and, wow. and the other films he did, and Broadway, of course. Did you, mm -hmm. how, how'd you feel about doing the role, you know, the first role in, in The Sopranos? Like, how did it, how did it? It was terrifying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> terrifying, right? Yeah. So how'd you get well, over you know, it? Was my it was my first, I, it was my first real professional job. I mean, I didn't even know what a mark was. Mm -hmm. I did no research when it came to that. I just feel like I'm going to go, I'm going to go and do this and everything. I kind of threw myself in it. Like uh, my uncle, uh, my uncle Nicky, I think it, it, he, he, he had a house in Newburgh, New York, and they had a built-in pool. You know, it was a communal house, you know, buildings, and it was like they had a square, it was a pool. He kind of like threw me in and said, no, swim now. You know? Oh, God. And you learn how to swim, and it was the same sort but of thing. But you never knew the dynamic. You didn't think it was going to be that Challenging, no. I mean. No, not only that, but did you think it was going to be that much of a successful um, show at the time? Yes, because it was a hit for two. There was a hit for two years. Right, that's true the too. Third year, it was yeah, a real big hit. Yeah. So when I came in, it was really in full, in full, oh, full was gear. It right, that's right. The yeah. first, well, the first three episodes, they didn't really know, and then people caught on to it, and they just loved it. It's mm -hmm. like, I liked seeing someone who had everything, yet. He had to make everybody around him, because he was miserable, he had to make everybody else around him miserable. Well, that was Tony mm -hmm. Soprano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... But it was a nat it was natural, though. It was almost like a reality show, but it was, you know, it was a... You know what I mean? Like, well, that was David Chase. You know, he had a lot of, you know... He made it like reality. He, he, he had a lot of experience in terms of show running Northern Exposure. His, uh, he, did, he had done some TV work before, but this was his... He grew up in Jersey, so this was on the back yeah. burner, and once he was able to get it together at HBO, provided yeah. that they were the first you, ones to produce, like Sopranos was the prototype to all these shows that you see now, Kaminsky Method, all those shows and, on, on uh, wow. Showtime, uh, Ray Donovan. Yeah, he, that uh, was a... But it, Sopranos was the first, it was the first of its kind, and HBO was smart enough to start producing, now everyone's producing. I mean, the bees produce it. Yeah, Netflix yeah. is producing. That's where the, all the, I guess all the money mm -hmm. is and everything. And, all the, and I guess all the good content, uh, I won't uh, say so much form because films are form plus content, but uh, I would say that uh, in terms of taking chances, network TV, there's a big difference between network TV and cable TV, right. HBO, Showtime. Yeah. I mean, they... Yeah. So what did you realize, like, you were, you were a great actor, like, that you could really act? Did you ever, did it ever hit you like, wow, well, I, I, know, I, I, I always felt what? I had it inside me, but I really didn't yeah. know. Uh, I mean, after the first season, Dave Chasey came up to me and said, well, what are you going to do after this season? I said, I hope to continue, uh, to, uh, hope to continue with this character. And he did. I, I did continue with the character. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it wasn't, you know, I, I did like 27, wow. 28 episodes. Okay, not the thing, bad. That's yeah. good. Wow. But the thing was, was and there's sometimes they were big, some bigger parts, and yeah. it's other parts being with See, the guys. See, that's what people don't realize. It ha you have to fit into the into the part of the story of the yeah, episode. Unless your cast is one of the protagonists. It's not that they don't want you in it. you got to yeah. fit, you know, right? You My thing was more or less a drip, 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 and then it became this big pool. Wow. And then just overflow, mm. so, which is a great way. Yeah. To, so you, you're... It's a great way to start. I had kind of like had my apprenticeship on The Sopranos, believe it or not. It was like an apprenticeship for me. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, of course, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I know a little bit, a few more things, so I'm not as <laughs> But you're very, no. It's intimidating when you got to, when you need to audition. You initially auditioned for George Ann Walken, uh, Chris Walken's wife, and oh. Sheila Jaffe, who wasn't there. She was taking care of the alley officer, was George Ann, because she was doing the show, the New York casting, in the New York casting. I think Sheila was doing the uh, LA casting. And, uh, and then you had to go to Silver Cup Studio, wow. and you had uh, David had the whole. He was a very. He's into the, the plurality of things. He would have the whole the set dresser. He had the cameraman there. 
he had the, uh, the costume people there, and they would audition you also. They were just like, it was like the Inquisition. Wow. Mm. And I mean, I said a lot of prayers, man. Yeah. So God, please, <laughs> well, we're gonna, please get yeah. me this role. Yeah. And it was my family that really helped me out, too. Wow. You know, yeah. they we're going to see, gonna to see one, um, one of the uh, sure, episodes of okay. uh, The Sopranos sure. with uh, James and the Phoenix. Uh, when Kenny's ready, just let us know. Listen, you know. I got you something. If you call the kids, David Yearman watches. 18 karat gold, diamond center. Why don't we get the feeling there's a jeweler somewhere found an insurance claim today? Actually, that ain't what it is. My Aunt Edie died. No. Now, wasn't I moved to California back in the 60s? It's a great lady. Only person in my life ever made me feel special. What are you going to do? Anyway, Silver Cloud, she did pretty well. She was married to Victor Borger's agent. She left me an inheritance town. Just over two mil. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Make sure you invested. Yeah, well, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Dan and me and the kids, you know how much we love Florida, right? What, do you want to put some money on the street down there? I was thinking about buying a place in Fort Myers. Retiring now, actually. Retiring? What are you, a hockey player? I'm going to be 50 in three years, Tom. My dad died at 52. You took an oath, Gene. There's no retiring from this. Well, I, I thought about that. And there was Joe Bananas. <laughs> Come on. Huh? What about your sports book? You had the responsibilities. What am I supposed to do about those? Danny? We know Bobby wants it. It's just... We go back a long way, Tom. Yeah, we do. Fucking CYO basketball. You believe that? It mean a lot to me and Deanne. Well, let me think about it. Ah. Yeah, wow. wow. What a chemistry you had, too. I know. You had a great, you know... That's, yeah, it's, it's very important. <laughs> I know. It's it's well, you, you, you're like a. See, you're a perfectionist. So when you see something, you say, "Oh, I could have did right." You're like, "Well, you know, I mean, yeah, that was them. You know, that was the character." I had yeah. a very good friend, and he, and he used but if to you say knew, me, he yeah. say to me, "Yeah, you watch yourself." And he was, he, he was. His name was Richard Bright, and he was Al Neri in The Godfather. He was kind of like my mentor. He would say. You know, I know you want to go back and do that, but you just kind of just accept it that that was your character. Yeah. yeah. And just accept it and move on. Because if you think about it, you yeah. really go backwards. You just got to keep continuing. Well, listen, the audience... Oh, no, you did you, so good. That you, was the, awesome. The audience felt comfortable with it. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the sure. most important. A lot of... That's what it happens with even musicians and, and singers. They're like, oh, I didn't... Boys are my best performer. Meanwhile, they had a standing ovation. It's not... It's not exactly... Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Perfect doesn't yeah. mean it's... You know? Sure, I agree. They want they want you to be a little offbeat, like you yeah. know, a little crazy. No, it's just the subconscious. That's the thing. Is it? When yeah, you see yourself in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to get used to that. Like I don't really watch myself a lot on TV. Yeah. No, I can tell you, you're, you're like on a film and TV. Yeah. It's not to be. It's questionable. It's just a. It's just the right. thing. It's a, it's a different. You, you still get feel the thrill. Level? You get the thrill. Yeah, no, I know. When you're doing you know, it, up, you get the heat and the thrill when you're doing it. Or when in the theater you get that one on one with the audience, and when you're filming, you get the one on one with the people around you, the the the, the, the cameraman, and you know that you got it. But that's the thrill, it, that the game. That's the game right there. You're playing the game there. But when you're watching it, it's not as thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of you know, it's less thrilling because you're watching. You know, when you're doing it, but you're watching it so. I don't know. It's yeah. kind of weird to explain, but that's what. That's yeah. What no, I know. I know. What, what do you think, Brenda? No, I think that that's true. Um, Cause like you feed off of the people who you work with, kind of like you're just yeah. like back and forth, you know. Like it, it's it's like exciting. Um, but I feel like sometimes it's certain productions they make things look better too. Like you, when you're on set, like you're doing something, and you're like, how's this gonna turn out? Like. You know, well, that's but the then they, right? that's the book when everybody edits it and puts it together, yeah, it's like, yeah. wow, that looks like amazing. Yeah, like, you know, it, it, it comes yeah. out like perfect. 
Yeah. So. I agree, yeah. That's very true. It, yeah. it does, it does, it, what I'm trying to say is, while you're doing the action of doing it, it's just nothing like it. It's just yeah. not the same as watching it when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great that you, you have, and that's what the great uh, thing about film and TV is, because when you get to that place where you really don't care anymore, when you just say, okay, I'm just going to do this w with my gut and, with, and, and what yeah. I feel inside, there's nothing like it, you know what I mean, that, that feeling, and of course, and then watching it becomes a, a bit more thrilling, you know, so it's, it's, all, it's all a growth uh, yeah, a learning curve. Well, there's a lot of actors yeah. out there that yeah. that, learning curve. that really don't know the direction they want to go in. Like you know, whether it's comedy or what do you say to that? Like you know, people that you know. What, what do you mean? Like, like actors. Well, comedy like, is comedy, the same as as, as as serious. No, but I'm saying you play a serious role. Could you? Could you? You could play. You could play. I could see you in comedy. Yeah, I've done some comedic films. You know, one of those. Was, well, one of them was mm -hmm. Broadway's finest. It's Broadway's on, uh, I think it's on uh, Prime. Maybe we'll put, play that next. Not yet, but we'll play that next. Maybe a little. But uh, bit. that yeah, was a cop. Was the cop? Yeah, I played a policeman. Yeah. The Broadway's Crazy. finest. Maybe next year. So. Yeah. Wow, that's well, I've cool. done some that's comedy. Right? Comedy's not really comedy. It's just you know, you're just you're convicted to do what you do, and it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if you look at it like to be funny, it's never going to be funny. Yeah. yeah. But it's definitely when you're acting, uh, you're supporting cast and, and stuff is so important. You know. Mm -hmm. Because look, when I when I uh, you see Jackie Gleason with Audrey Meadows, she's great. You see him with another another housewife. He doesn't have the timing. There's no timing there. Look at the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. Without the bald, was it Crowley? What's his name? Yeah. The bald-headed guy? He's out I mean, of it. I always thought that too. Never. It don't, I don't care how good of an episode it is. Uh, the, you know, the funniness of it, you know, the writing, don't matter. Well, you're only really as good as the person opposite you. Yeah. yeah. So that person is so important. You can't be Missing doing link. it by yourself. Yeah. That's the thing with the, the Zoom stuff it's 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 a, i mean listen it's what we had during the covid crisis yeah, yeah but it's could, not the yeah, same no, it's as having same. someone mm -hmm. across from you because when you have someone across from you it does something yeah. to you it gives you a and thrill. nobody i don't care you know as, mm -hmm. i i understand that teach you know you can go to class for learning to act but i just you there's certain things you just can't teach I agree with that. You know, yeah, I, I mean, so. you know what you can learn though is how to do the prompter and, and yeah, yeah, and you know that part. But as far as acting, like if, like when we did, we did like um, things in the B studio. You yeah. know, we did like improv with this uh, this girl Angela, and she said she she wrote out a script. I said first time I ever did it, and she goes, "Oh, Fred, just follow, you know, just act, you know, spontaneous." Mm -hmm. And I just went that way. With, with her, and I was like, wow, this, this really came good, you know, but if you, if you, if you try to make it perfect, you know, you, you know what I mean? Sure. So I don't know. Yeah, you can't overthink it too much, I think. Like, what do you think, I mean, on that? I mean, you're the, you're the great actor. I'm just, what? I, I, I'm, no, I think I mean, that you made it, you made it big. A, there's, a, there's, always, there's always been a, uh, um, I mean, the great directors, work with, they're, they're such good directors like uh, John Cassavetes and, and Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. They've always had a level of amateur people that are amateurs that are not truly actors. Uh, Marty used his mom and dad in many of his films. They're not professional actors. In film you can do this. Yeah. Maybe not in theater so much, but in film you can. As long as the person feels relaxed mm -hmm. and feels comfortable, which his parents did, in the beginning, some of the early films may be not as comfortable as the latter films, like his dad in Goodfellas. He was great. Mm. <laughs> he says that uh, we, we had, when he tells the De Niro of Jimmy Burke, he says you know, he's gone. He couldn't do nothing about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's always this thing with the amateurs and everything. So you, as a person, yeah. could get a very, I mean, and it was always, sometimes the amateurs beat out the actor actors in some of really? the scenes. They're even better because, than actors. Because they well, laid into it. it's not that they're professional actors. Yeah. They don't really probably do as many right. roles. Right, right, right. But when they do work with those directors, they come off very well because they listen right. and they feel relaxed. And well, they do what they, and they have that element, that yeah. talent inside them and you don't want them so, to change you don't want to you don't want to teach about acting if, if what they're what they're right. doing 
is right the way it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Like when that's you why you hired him. Fellini was like that, the great Italian director. A lot of the right. Italians, Italian directors, the, they would the, the when they did Bicycle Thief, he actually cast that role. Um, I was just reading or listening to listening to him. He cast that role. He did a big casting call, and he he. he even the, the father, he was taken from a, a, a large cattle call. Mm -hmm. And he went on to do a few, a few of his films because he had this quality that uh, he just had an instinctual quality that he was going to work. I don't know the, the, his name or the young boy's name, but right. if you watch those films, those are amateurs, but they listened well, they felt comfortable with, with yeah. Federico. And he was able to get great things from yeah. him. It's just the same, just the same, the yeah. same thing goes for John Cassavetes, who worked with a lot of amateurs, and he worked with professionals too. And he talks about that, that little, that dichotomy between. Them. So how was it like? Oh, so you the la the last thing you did. I'm sorry, you, the last thing you did was the the Irishman, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, that part with De Niro. Yes. Do well, we have that role? Can we get to that? Me, yes. uh, the Irishman. Um, That's very good. Yeah, well, I want to show it because that was great. I mean. Yeah, when you yeah, acted with a legend, right? Yeah, with, uh, with uh, yes, Robert De Niro. Yeah. Did it, it come out? All right. There's a picture. She'll get no, yeah, that was the picture. He's going to get the uh, video. Oh, yeah, that's video. the picture okay. of it. Do you have the video? When you get a chance, let me know. Just roll it in. But yeah, so how was it with uh, acting? Uh, it was a, it was a great. I felt it was a wonderful experience mm -hmm. working with Robert De Niro. First of all, because he was my hero growing up, yeah. Taxi Driver, Mean Streets, all those films. The young, the younger. And finally to get to act with him, even if it's a scene, you feel like, when I left that set, I felt like, wow, man, I, I really, truly came, have come a long way. And, you know, James used to tell me, like, you know, don't. You know, you just don't be intimidated by anyone. Mm -hmm. No. And I brought that in there. I wasn't intimidated. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you feel good about yourself because you work with a genius actor, yeah. an Academy yeah. Award-winning actor, and you were there. Right. Not to even though a lot of people have worked with them. Not only it's, it really comes to a handful if you think about it in a worldwide, uh, World, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a big, on a big scale. Yeah. So it was a, it was a great experience to work to work with him. Of course, I knew some of his uh, people that he that he had did films with. My mentor, Richard Bright, knew him from uh, Once Upon a Time in America, Sergio Leone. He mm -hmm. played Chicken Joe in that film, and they were friends. And also, uh, Richard, who was in The Godfather, met Robert when right. he was playing the Almiri uh, in The Godfather. I'm sure they, they crossed paths when he was doing The Godfather. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and then, of course, for Tanya Aldo, who was Richard's ex-wife, okay. she was in The Deer Hunter. And that was one of his greatest roles when yeah, in, in the yeah. Dan, uh, you know, I mean, that Vietnam, that yeah. quintessential Michael Cimino. Wow. That was a great day. Have you seen that? No, I, I haven't you have seen, to seen that. That's thing. why you would be yeah, a great director, because you pick, no, but I'm saying the way he describes the scenes and, and how it, Thank you. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what, it, you have to pick apart whatever scene it is and, or whatever you're going to, you know, like, you're going to make a scene, you got to have it. You know, you got to have a good imagination. I'm well, sure. a, you know, a good scene like the take that we did on uh, on the Irishman, you, you get with a great director like Martin Scorsese. He uh, he said, "Okay, now that you, we've done it a few times, I want you to do just yourself. You can improvise a little bit, like you did, yeah, and just let it let it just go ahead and do whatever you want to do." And that's the take yeah, that he good. used. He used the take that some of that was my dialogue that I came up with. Some things that wasn't Steve's alien, but I, of course I don't get the know why it's Steve's <laughs> alien. Do we have that role in Ken? The Irishman? You no? Okay. All right. All right. Well, what, you, what about Broadway Finest? You got that? You played a cop in that, in that right? Broadway Finest was a comedy. Yeah, a comedy. Directed by Stephen Marrow. Oh, there you go. That's that's totally different. Yeah, that's that's comedy, right? Yes, mm -hmm. right. So it's different. Yeah. Yeah. You have that one? All right. I told your sister, Willie, you should have been a cop. Yeah, yeah, I know. Is this how these things are written? The good ones? Hey, Buckley, maybe we ought to write one. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you could do it, Willie, I can't do it. Sure. Here you go. Sign here. What's this? To release in case you get shot. You guys have any good cop stories? Last week we had a jumper. Oh. Jumper? Yeah, attempted suicide. This guy, what was his name? Antoine. 
He just can't seem to get it right. <laughs> Antoine was the most excitement we had this year. Don't you watch the news? The crime rate is down. We see more action in a hockey game. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No napping. Pop. How about that for drama? How do you arrest a drug dealer? You know, I don't know how to arrest a drug dealer. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, wake up. You're going to get your wish. We just got a call. Possible homicide. We're going in. We don't want to disturb the evidence. Just don't touch anything and be quiet. Wow, that was funny. I was about to say, this is a comedy, and then it tw turned around. I was like, oh, I see where they're going. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> so when was that? Uh, that was that was probably 2002, probably 2000, 2002, 2001, 2002. And that was Steve Matt was the director, a very good commercial director, and he decided to do this film, Broadway's Fine. It's about a bunch of actors who really can't get parts so they decide to write their own story mm -hmm. and it was a great it was really a wonderful uh, uh, film and Steve did a great job and I think that I wish it was 10 years prior to that uh, because I think that the it could have went over a lot a lot bigger right. actors trying to write their own story it was kind of Maybe it was uh, too familiar to people act as their plight and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But back, if it was maybe ten years prior, but Steve, he was a great director and a good, really good. So it was a director. sitcom or it was a sitcom? It was a film. It was a, oh, a, it was film. a film. It's on. I think it's on uh, Amazon. Amazon or okay. either Amazon, Netflix, or uh, or Prime or um, on Netflix. It's still you can still rent it. Cool. Awesome. It's a very good, a very good film. I gotta see it. Yeah. I like your laugh. Your your huh? <laughs> Where you do like your big <laughs> laugh. I love that. Thank you. So good. Yeah. And you were on... Being Italian, it's easy to laugh. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what was the American Gangster? That was, uh, that was another one. American Gangster, yeah, that was, that was... That was Ruby so Scott. Good. Yeah. My dad had passed away, and, and uh, oh, just before... Thank you. Just before he passed away, he, I'd gone, and, and I think he had something to do with getting that role, so I did... I, I, I landed the role of McCann. 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 See, he didn't have a, a vowel in the last name either, so, you know, I've been castable in non-Italian roles, too. Wow. You hear that, people out there? Yeah, yeah. so you, you got... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was uh, a Josh Brolin's... SC played a special investigations right. unit uh, detective back then when, you know, Popeye Doyle and... I mean, not Popeye Doyle, I mean, Serpico. Serpico. And those guys, yeah. they were kind of crooked. They took they were on the take. He was one on the tape with Josh Brown opposite Josh, which was a trip. It was it was a great experience to work with Ridley Scott. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I think I could tell a little story about my the first day on set. They called me in. I wasn't I wasn't in the scene, and, <laughs> and Ridley Scott wanted me to be in the scene with Josh. So we walk into Richie Roberts, who was played by Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. his uh, his detective office, and and of course uh, Josh is the big detective and. Uh, the, the captain of uh, uh, I know of us and, uh -huh. and my partner and he uh, he kind of threatens uh, Richie Roberts tells him you know if you're going to be doing all this stuff here with the drugs and everything you got to get paid and you know, give us some money he tries to shake him down but he, to no avail of course because Russell Crowe doesn't right. and she doesn't do it mm -hmm. but uh, I remember uh, we rehearsed. Yeah. and I, I went up to and in the rehearsal I stand I stood outside the office and then. Brolin went in to see Richie Roberts and uh, Russell Crowe, and they were like, it was, you know, just both of them together. So I said to Ridley, I said, well, after one of the takes, don't you think I would, perhaps this is my first day, wow. I think I would be with, you know, Josh, because I mean, these guys, they stick together, and, and Ridley uh, says very dryly, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and I said, oh. you know what? You're right. I mean, if I want to do this job, continue yeah. to be his partner, yeah. I'm not going to give him any trouble. So, and I worked about a couple of months, I, I, a good month and a half Sorry. on that film. 
And I met Russell Crowe. You Crow. exited that. I, uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, so these are the little things you learn as you go along. Yeah. But I did Sorry meet again. Russell Crowe that day, which was great to, to I mean, because he's a, that was his. I think that might have been his first film after Gladiator. I'm not sure, but that was wonderful to meet him also. So wow. there's some great things that, in acting yeah. that you can do. You meet people who make a difference. Because what's acting about? It's I trying know. to. It's trying to make a difference. It's trying to make the world mm -hmm. see. How we live. Right. And question how we live. It's the ancient Greek question. How are we going to live? How Let's look at ourselves honestly and try not to make the same mistakes. Try not to make the same mistakes. That's what acting's about. Like I go yeah. out for a lot of auditions. Right. They're like wise guys and stuff like that. But that's not really not what a lot of actors are about. A lot of actors want to get a chance. Some are very fortunate. They yeah. they to, to, they get a chance to say something special. But the other things. It all adds up, and it all drips into a big pool of honesty and truth. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, we flow up river, and we try to get like salmon. Yeah. And we, and <laughs> this is a, we all, all do that one way yeah. or the other. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. And we're sporting. We're sporting more actors like Miranda. She gets yeah. inspired, and well, she, 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 could, she could be, uh, you know, always be nice to people. I know, because they say on the way out, they could be on the way well, down. She's been floating. Around. But you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's what it's really about. Not really about so many people are, so, are actors yeah. are concerned. I gotta get this part. I gotta get this part. No, you don't gotta get the part. Yeah. 